introduction. I am Gary Perlman from the University of Toulouse in France, and I'm going to present you our work in collaboration with the company Berger Levro on the Rolly Poly Mouse, a rolling input device unifying 2D and 3D interaction. So our work starts from a simple, simple observation. In nowadays softwares, uh, there are more and more complex data to manipulate, and which is represented by many dimensions. Those dimensions may vary and are very dependent of the software in which they are. For example, on Google Calendar, the, those dimensions could be the timeline or the event type. Uh, however, on the Photoshop, for example, the, th those dimensions could be the color or the thickness of a line. In the particular example of 3D manipulations, there are six degrees of freedom for the 3D model, three translations and three rotations, and there are two dimensions for the 2D GUI. The regular mouse is very useful for manipulating this 2D GUI. However, uh, it's pretty limited to manipulate 3D objects because of the lack of mm, additional dimensions. So uh, to provide an easier way to manipulate this kind of data, uh, there are interaction techniques that have been developed. They range from uh, tactile interaction to media gestures. Uh, considering, uh, concerning the tactile interaction, uh, they are slower than the regular mouse or dedicated 3D devices for 6D docking task. And concerning uh, mid-air gestures, they induce fatigue and are not suited for long interactions. Uh, others, uh, other approaches uh, try to uh, use augmented mice with additional degrees of freedom like the globfish and globe mouse, which are uh, based on a round uh, ball, or the space mouse, a commercialized device. Uh, two founding works on this uh, topic are the working mouse and the video mouse, which are augmented mice with a uh, rounded bottom part, and they allow for uh, rolls and rotations. Concerning the to the globfish, globe mouse, and space mouse, uh, the main problem with those devices is that they offer rate control uh, mode to manipulate an object, and in 2D pointing tasks, uh, rate control is less uh, usable than the position control. And concerning the working mouse and the video mouse, they offered limited roll and rotation amplitude. In order to cope with this problem, we propose the Rolly Poly Mouse, uh, an augmented mouse based on the Rolly Poly Toy principle. It has an hemispherical bottom part and it's weighted, so you can auto realign when it's released. Uh, it allows for three different gestures, 3D translations, two rolls, left, right, and front, back, and one rotation, left, right. Uh, in our studies, we don't focus on the third dimension, the eighth, the eighth uh, due to the fatigue issue. Uh, the main thing, the most important thing with this device is that it uh, keeps the properties of a regular mouse so it can still be used in 2D translation on uh, an experimental table. It has a theoretical roll limit of 90 degrees uh, due to its hemispherical bottom part and it has a theoretical roll rotation. Uh, it has no theoretical roll rotation uh, due to its, the fact that it's totally symmetrical. Uh, also, uh, users can perform compound gestures, for example, a translation and a roll at the same time. So with this device, we had three main questions. The first one was a design question. Uh, we wanted to finalize the design of the device by defining its upper shape and by exploring different and different end postures. After that, uh, and based on these results, we had two research questions. The first one was to determine the limit and capabilities of this new device, and after that, uh, explore its usage in the concrete context of 3D manipulation. So uh, we performed a pre-study uh, to answer the design question. There were 12 participants, all right and dead, which had to perform uh, four sets of tasks, translations alone, rotations alone, rolls alone, and compound gestures. They had to use three, v three versions of the Rolly Poly Mouse, an hemispherical one, a convex one and a concave one. Uh, they were totally free to adopt the hand postures they wanted for each set of tasks and we took pictures each time. Uh, and we also asked them uh, their preference concerning the shape of the device. This allowed us to find that uh, the concave shape uh, was disliked by most of the users so we didn't keep this uh, device 
for the rest of the experiment, and we used the most frequently one uh, most frequently used one hand postures uh, that we named squeeze, lay, and touch, and we used those three hand postures in the later experiment. Uh, based on these results, we wanted to explore the capabilities and limitations of this device and to assess its stability. Because it has a totally uh, rounded bottom part, we thought that uh, one gesture could uh, have effects on other gestures. So in order to track the device in this experiment and in the 3D manipulation, we used the NoptiTrack infrared tracking system based on 12 cameras around the experimental surface and we augmented the two versions of the device with infrared markers that were specifically placed to never hinder or interfere in any gesture. So in the first experiment, there were 12 participants, all right and dead, and they had to perform three sets of tasks, eight translations, eight rolls, and two rotations. In this experiment, we used the two device and three hand postures we defined in the pre-study. We found no difference concerning the rotation between the two versions of the roly-poly mouse, but we found a difference between the left and right rotation. We, we think it's due to the wrist biomechanical limitation. And we also found that the squeeze and postures allow for larger rotations to the right than the two others. It's pretty important because uh, hand postures have an impact on the capabilities of the device. Concerning roll, uh, we define the roll stability as the difference between the required roll direction and the actually performed roll direction. And it's 10 degrees on average for each direction. And concerning the maximum roll amplitude, we found significant difference between the two devices. The hemispherical one allows for larger roll amplitude, 40 degrees uh, against 35 degrees for the convex shape. Uh, as I mentioned before, we wanted to uh, explore the instability of the device, and we found that during translations, unintentional rolls and rotations occurs. It's on average 12 degrees for the rolls and 15 degrees for the rotations. Uh, so to sum up this experiment results, uh, we found that the roly poly mouse allow large rolls and rotations, uh, 40 degrees or for rolls and uh, uh, from 48 to 57 degrees for rolls, uh, for rotations, and it allows eight precise rolling direction. It's important because we can map eight distinguishable actions to this device. And for example, we could uh, map this device to a uh, marking menu. We also found that the hand postures have an impact on the rotation amplitude. And we found that unintentional rolls and rotations occurs during translations. Uh, to cope with this problem, we propose two solutions. The first one is the usage of a threshold of 12 degrees for rolls and 15 for rotations, beyond which uh, these gestures are considered as voluntary. And the second one is the correction algorithm that we propose, that we explain and propose in the paper, and which compensates those drifts. So uh, having these results, we wanted to explore its usage in a concrete context of 3D manipulation. We split this experiment into two subtasks, 3D pointing task and a 3D docking task. In the 3D pointing task, there were 12 participants, all right-handed, and uh, they had to dock a 3D cursor. Uh, we designed the specific interaction technique for this experiment, so the user could translate in two dimensions on the experimental surface the device to perform uh, depth and width translation in the environment. And to change the ele elevation of the 3D cursor, they had to roll front and back the device. There will be a short uh, video just after. Concerning the 3D docking task, there are 12 participants, all right and dead, that had to dock a cur tetrahedron cursor in the 3D environment, and we performed the direct mapping between the actions on the device and the 3D environment. So this is an example to illustrate uh, our interaction technique. Uh, the interaction technique for the 3D tr translation task was specifically designed to allow the user to split the gesture into two gestures. One, to align the cursor in the depth and width, and after, it could, uh, the users could uh, uh, roll the device to align its height. Uh, it is also possible, and we've seen it in the experiments, that the users, uh, after learning, perform the gesture like experts. They directly perform the compound gesture to allow uh, the translations in the three dimensions. 
We also, there is also an example for the three docking tasks. So there were di direct mapping between the gestures, the roll and rotation performed on the device and in the 3D scene. In this experiment, we compared the two versions of the roly poly mouse to two versions of the space mouse. Uh, one version with the default gain and one version with the smaller gain uh, because users found that the default gain was too fast. Uh, concerning hand postures, we didn't constrain them on this experiment because uh, we didn't want to constrain the hand postures on the space mouse. Concerning this experiment result, uh, for the 3D pointing task, we found no difference between the two versions of the roly poly mouse and between the two versions of the space mouse. So we grouped the, r the results in this uh, graph. Uh, however, there is a significant difference between the roly poly mouse and the space mouse. Uh, on average, 31% uh, percent, uh, faster uh, with the roly poly mouse. And we found that this gap grows as, uh, as the ID grows. We found no difference concerning the 3D docking task between the four devices. Concerning the user preference, we found that uh, the user that strongly liked a device, uh, strongly liked the roly poly mouse almost each time. There was only one user which strongly liked the space mouse. And the only user that disliked a device disliked the space mouse. We also found that the space mouse needs more concentration than the roly poly mouse, and that uh, it's the roly poly mouse is easier to manipulate due to its classical cursor position mode uh, control. To sum up this experiment result, we found that the 3D pointing task was performed faster with the roly poly mouse than with the space mouse. We found no difference for 3D docking, and we found that users preferred the roly poly mouse over the space mouse. Uh, to go a little further, we also developed a proof of concept prototype, which is totally embedded. It's, it's based on a six degrees of freedom uh, magnetic sensor, which tracks the position and the orientation of the device at real time. And we also added an embedded button on this device using a resistive potentiometer and an Arduino FIO. Uh, using this prototype, we plugged it on a real applica application, uh, which is a uh, Google Street View. As a future work, we plan to try different tracking technology and assess their contribution uh, on the device capabilities, like lasers, cameras, or other technologies. And we want to further explore the possibility of an embedded button. Uh, we already partially explored the possibility of a circular button, but there are many other solutions, like capacitive surfaces or push buttons. Thank you for listening to my presentation, and I'll be happy to answer your questions. calibrate the device um, so uh, with the markers on it ah with the integrated version um, there is a we can see it on the the embedded prototype but there is a, a base uh, on the table which calibrates automatically the device using the magnetic sensor so it's pretty easy like uh, 30 seconds 